Okay, so um, welcome everybody that's uh, in the process of joining there. We'll, we'll get started very shortly, just to give it a chance. So today, um, we're going to look at the situation around managing sex semen, and Stephen Butler, who will be familiar to you all, I'm sure, is going to talk to you about how to maximize conception rate using sex semen. And then we have Jim White, based in Mullinahone, farming in Mullinahone with his wife, Teresa, and his four daughters who has um, been using sex semen since 2013 uh, and has a good story to tell in relation to it and uh, a very positive experience around it. Um, and it's going to be very timely given that there's yet another article in the Sunday Times on Sunday just gone in relation to calves and how we have, an, as an industry, are mistreating them, which, of, as you all know, is inappropriate or completely out of context in my opinion. Um, so it's timely that we talk about sex semen as we're approaching the breeding season, maybe started the breeding season in some places already, and the role that, that it can play. So Stephen has been doing a lot of research into this, uh, started probably before 2013, but went to large scale farm trials in 2013, uh, and some more significant trials even in more recent times. So I'm going to hand you across to Stephen to give you a presentation in relation to it, and then you can we'll take some questions. So just to let you know, hopefully you can see um, down at the bottom there's a Q&A button that you can click on there, and you can type in your question there, and I'll be able to see it here. So that's the way we'll be taking questions. Uh, we won't be taking questions verbally, we'll say so. Um, I'll hand you over to Stephen, and let Stephen go through his presentation, and we'll take the the questions for Stephen at the end and then we'll bring Jim in to talk about his experience and we will have questions again then at the end for both speakers again so I'll hand over to you now Stephen so thank you. Okay thanks George so as George said I'm going to give a short presentation here on tips to maximize conception rate of insect semen. Okay so just at the very beginning I just want to give a little bit of information that we learned last year from a, from a field trial we conducted. And I just want to acknowledge at the very beginning that there was 24 herds participated in this. Uh, it was jointly managed by Chagas and ICPF and we had a lot of funding and input from, from a, a number of companies that are in, indicated here on the slide. So the 2019 trial, we were trying to control the timing of AI, to examine the timing of AI and how critical that was for uh, conception rates with sex semen. So we had 24 herds and each herd was asked to uh, identify 100 cows for usage on the study. So the, the objective was to inseminate these cows with the different treatments on mating start date. So the trial involved a visit to the herd 10 days before mating start date. So on that day, the, the cows that were identified for the study were examined by a vet, and if they were suitable, if they were free of problems and uh, good enough condition score, not lame, not, not visibly having, having problems, um, and met our other criteria of being in parity one to four, and being at least 50 days in milk on the, on the scheduled day of AI, they were enrolled on the study. So they started the synchronization protocol, which started with an injection of GnRH and the insertion of a PRID. Seven days later, an injection of prostaglandin, and the following day, a second injection of prostaglandin and the removal of the PRID. And the timing of this was, was um, targeted to be about nine o'clock in the morning, so, so after the morning milking. And then the next day, after the evening milking at 5 p.m., an injection of GnRH. Now this is what a fixed time AI protocol looks like and all of these interventions are to set up a fertile ovulation event. And the objective normally is to allow timing of AI, fixed time AI at nine o'clock in the morning, um, somewhere between 16 and 20 hours after this final injection of GnRH. So uh, this was implemented on, on uh, each of the 24 farms and roughly 100 cows on each one of those farms. So we had two initial treatments that we were interested in. And that was to inseminate cows with conventional semen at 9 a.m., um, which was the normal timing of AI, sex semen at 9, 9 a.m. We also had an additional treatment, which involved inseminating cows with sex semen at three in the afternoon. Okay, so, so there was two sex semen treatments, and a normal timing of AI and a very delayed timing of AI. And as you can see, we had roughly 720 cows per treatment. And within each herd, um, one third of the cows got each one of these treatments and, and each, each group of cows were pretty much identical within each herd. So they were balanced for parity, balanced for days in milk, and insofar as possible were, were, were um, essentially similar animals within each herd getting each treatment. 
this is the overall results. So we've got conception rate here on this y-axis here. So that's the that's the how many got pregnant to each service. And then we've got our three treatments: conventional semen at 9 a.m., sex semen at 9 a.m., and sex semen at 3 p.m. And as you can see, we got really good results in terms of the, the conception rate with conventional semen, 61% on average across the 24 herds. Sex semen at 9 a.m. averaged 49%, and sex semen at 3 p.m. averaged 51.3%. When we're talking about sex semen, we often refer to something called the relative conception rate. And all that simply means is you take the conception rate achieved with the sex semen, and you divide it by the conception rate achieved with conventional semen, and you get this value here. So 80%, 80.3%. And, and basically that means the sex semen was 80% as good as the conventional semen result over here. The sex semen at 3 p.m. was slightly better. 50, so, so very delayed timing of AI on average was slightly better, 51% or a relative conception rate of 84%. Um, so that's the overall picture. That's the averages across all 24 herds. Here I'm showing you the results for each individual herd. And the difference here is that I've joined, as you can see on the previous slide, there wasn't a huge difference between the two sex semen treatments. So for ease of illustration, I've just joined up the two sex semen, sex 9 a.m. and sex 3 p.m. into one single sex treatment. And that's what's shown here in the red bars. So the, the, each bar here, the blue bar, for example, this is the mean conception rate for conventional semen in a particular herd. And the red bar beside it is the mean conception rate for sex semen within an individual herd. And I've broken them up into three groups. So this is the best third of herds. So they're ranked based on relative conception rate. How did sex semen fare relative to conventional semen? And then we've got the middle third of herds here, and we've got the poorest third of herds over here. So let's look first on the, the herds on the left hand side. So those herds on the left, on average, had a relative conception rate of 100%. And basically what that means, on average, across these eight herds, um, the conception rates achieved with sex semen were essentially equal to the conception rates achieved with conventional semen. And you can see here, the first three herds, in fact, sex semen was slightly better than conventional, but for all these herds, overall, sex semen and conception rates giving you the same results. Then we move to the middle third of herds, and you can see clearly here, you know, uh, in every case here, sex semen is poorer than conventional, but the, probably this gap is more or less what farmers starting the study might have been expecting. This is the sort of performance that maybe they were expecting sex semen to achieve relative to conventional. And then we have the, 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 thir the third of herds here on the, on the far right-hand side of the slide. And this is a different picture here. You can see that the on average, the relative conception rate here is 67%, meaning that sex semen on average was two thirds as good as conventional semen. And you can see that there's even within this eight herds, there's quite a bit of variation. So, so over here, it's not too bad. But once you get over to the very far right, in particular, this last herd, sex semen was half as good as the conventional semen. Now, there's a few important things to, to note in this slide. Um, every herd had the same mix of every bull. Right, so the sex semen that this herd got over here was the same as the sex semen as these herds got over here. Also important to note that the, the herds here that are on the far right had really good conception rates with conventional semen. So these were high fertility herds, well managed, achieving good conception rates. Uh, the synchronization protocol must have been implemented correctly, and the time of AI was approximately correct. So, so how do we how do we square away? The fact that we'd fertile herds here that weren't doing very well in terms of the, the, the sex semen performance. So what we've tried to do is come up with some guidelines here on how to manage sex semen usage to try and give yourself the best chance of achieving good conception rates with sex semen. So we've got three slides here on, on general tips. So here's the first one. First of all, the bulls. You're sitting down first to pick your bulls that you're going to use during the breeding season. And the, the obvious advice is pick the highest EBI bulls available. You're using, you're using these bulls to generate replacements and EBI is going to be your, your indicator of the genetic worth of those animals. So pick the best EBI bulls available. If you're going to be using sex semen to generate most or all of your replacements, use, use a good sized team. Um, so we recommend at least five bulls. And the reason for that is some bulls have a deterioration in fertility after sorting. And, and sometimes that can be quite a big drop off in fertility. We have no way of knowing in advance who those bulls are or how big that reduction in fertility is going to be. So to mitigate that risk, use, use a good sized team of bulls. In terms of the dams, 
Well, as you all know, the, the heifers are going to be the most fertile animals in the herd. And in general, they're also the highest EBI. So as a, as a, you know, as a rule, they are going to be the, the best return on your investment in sex semen. So they must have achieved target live weight, good body condition score. And just from looking at these animals over the last several weeks, you should know that they are cycling regularly. So if, these, if there's a question mark about, you know, are they all pubertal yet? Have they started cycling? Then, then think again as to whether or not they're suitable for sex semen. But if they have reached those targets, then these are the best animals to use sex semen on. But even if you use sex semen on all your heifers, it's not going to give you enough replacements. So you will need to target some cows as well. So the targeting of the cows is basically targeting the most fertile cows in the herd. So the rules we put in for the trial last year, and it worked quite well, was to use parity one to four. So younger cows, again, these will be the highest EBI animals within the lactating cow herd. At least 50 days in milk on the day of AI. So last year, that was a minimum, a minimum 50 days. On average, I think the, the average days in milk was roughly 75 to 78 days in milk. So you can see we were targeting the cows that calved in, in January, February. Uh, good body condition score. So if, if possible, body condition score of at least three. Again, cycling regularly in the weeks before the breeding season. And importantly, that, that you pick animals that are free of postpartum disorders um, and uterine disease. So any cows that had problems after calving, whether that's metabolic problems like milk fever or ketosis or reproduction problems like retained placenta, metritis, um, or even uh, you know, things that are unrelated to fertility like lameness, mastitis. These are all uh, diseases that, that reduce the likelihood of those cows going in calf. So again, not good, at, not good candidates for using sex semen on. So you are trying to identify the highest fertility dams in the herd. Okay, so that's the bulls and the dams. When, when should you use sex semen? So you should restrict the usage of sex semen to the first three weeks of the breeding season. Again, there, there may be a, a reduction in, in, in conception rates and to avoid that having a, um, a building effect on, the, on, on your fertility profile during the breeding season, restrict its usage to the very start of the breeding season. And if possible, do so within the first 10 days. So, so try and get your sex semen usage um, done and dusted in the first week to 10 days of the breeding season, if possible. When is the best time to AI? So if you're observing animals and you're deciding when should you inseminate them, the best time, and this is instructions from manufacturers, and I guess our own observations back it up, to, to inseminate the animals 14 to 20 hours after heat onset. So, you know, if it's DIY and it's possible, then AM, PM rule would be, would be a good rule here. If you're relying on a technician service, you would use sex semen on those animals that are, that are into that window of being 14 to 20 hours after heat onset. So they're, they're gone off standing heat, basically. Um, but if you have other animals that are still in strong, strong standing heat, they're, they're better candidates to get conventional semen. Another option is to use fixed time AI. We did this last year on, on a fairly large scale in a field trial. Uh, and I think we got pretty good results overall. It is costly. So that protocol that I showed you is going to cost somewhere between 25 and 30 euros per animal. But the advantage is that it mitigates the risk. So when I say risk here, I'm talking about poor conception rates with sex semen compared to conventional semen. So the advantage is that you can implement those inseminations at the very beginning of the breeding season, ideally on mating start date. So if you can do that, even if you get a reduction in fertility, those animals will be repeating by day 21. So they have two chances of going calf in the first 21 days instead of one. So that's the, the timing of AI and when we're going to, um, how are we going to get the animals bred? The next thing is on the day of AI itself. And this is really critical. And we need to think of sex semen as being a somewhat damaged, fragile product. It has gone through a sorting process. And the way conventional semen is handled, you know, there's, there's a large number of sperm cells in those straws. They've gone through no damaging steps. It can be, you can get away with things with conventional semen that you simply can't get away with, with, with sex semen. So you need to be more diligent in terms of the handling of the straws. So in advance, if, if the tank is on your own farm, organize the sex semen straws into one goblet. Um, when you're getting ready to inseminate the animals, thaw two sex semen straws at a time. And that's, that's a maximum. Only thaw two straws at a time. Thaw them at 35 to 37 degrees for 45 seconds. So again, uh, checking that temperature, timing the, the thawing time, making sure you're getting that right. These straws then after thawing should be loaded into pre-warmed AI guns and those AI guns should be warm. The, the semen should be deposited into the uterine body as normal. 
and the insemination should be completed within five minutes. So, so you're, you're, you're only following the number of straws that you think you can get into those animals within five minutes and try and, try and um, make sure that insemination happens within that five minute interval. So the next thing I'm just gonna to quickly touch on here is um, how many straws do you need to be using? And, and this is a work example of how you might calculate the number of straws you would need to use on your herd. So this example here, we have 100 cow lactating herd, and that 100 cow lactating herd also has 25 maiden heifers available for AI. And in this example, I'm assuming we're getting pretty good conception rates. So it, in this example, the heifer conception rates um, are normally 70% with conventional semen. The cow conception rates are normally 60% with conventional semen. And we're assuming here that regardless of whether you're using sex semen after observed heat or after timed AI, the heifer conception rates are going to be back to 60% and the cow conception rates are back to about 50%. And that's kind of the average of what we've seen in, in other studies that we've done so far. So the desired calf crop here is to have 30 dairy female calves born. And then on this farm, the remainder could be beef. And, it could, and that beef doesn't really matter if it's male or female calf, but you're avoiding the male dairy calf. That's the objective. So we'll, let's say that we have 25 heifers and all of those heifers can, are available for AI with dairy sex semen. So 25 heifers, 60% conception rate, 90% sex bias in those sex semen straws is gonna give us 13 and a half female calves. Now there's no such thing as a half, a half a calf, but I'm gonna leave these decimals in place here because if, if somebody wants to multiply these figures up for a, for a 200 cow herd or multiply them by a half for, for a smaller herd, you can, you can easily do so. So I'm leaving all the decimals in place here. But if you get 13 and a half female calves, you're going to get one and a half male calves. And I'm assuming here with the heifers that all the repeats are going to get beef AI or beef stock bull. And at the end of the heifer breeding season, we've 95% final and calf rate, meaning that you've 8.75 beef cross calves as well. So we need 30 dairy female replacements. And from the heifers, from one round of AI, we've got 13 and a half. So how many AI do I need to use on the, on the lactating cow herd? We want 30, calves, 30, 30 female calves, we've got 13 and a half, we need 16 and a half more from the lactating cow herd. So if we work it out, 16 and a half, 50% conception rate, 90% sex bias, we're gonna need 37 straws to use on the lactating cow herd. And that would give us 16.7 female calves and also 1.9 male calves. Again, I'm going to assume here that the repeats are going to get beef AI or beef stock bull. And at the end of the 12 week breeding season in cows, we've achieved 90% final and calf rate. So that's going to give us 71.4 beef cross calves. If we add up all that, all the pregnancies from the, the cows and the heifers, this is what the calf crop could potentially look like. Um, 30 female dairy calves, three male dairy calves, and then there's 80 beef cross, 40, 40 female beef cross um, calves, and 40 male beef cross calves. So the total number of pregnancies generated is 113 from our 125 available breeding females. So just quickly in terms of how to set these animals up for AI, so the, the most common option is to use uh, prostaglandin, um, at, use prostaglandin after a certain number of days of breeding. So with, with any prostaglandin protocol, the key thing is that the heifers must be cycling. So if there's any question mark about whether or not the, sec the, the heifers are all cycling, then this pro prostaglandin protocol is not gonna work very well. It does require uh, heat detection aids combined with periods of observation to achieve good results. So this is the protocol. Zero here is mating start date. And for the first six or seven days of the breeding season, you're observing heifers for heat and uh, inseminating as normal. Any heifers not bred by day seven can get an injection of prostaglandin and if they're all cycling, most of them will come into heat 48, 72, 96 hours later. So, so basically they should all be bred by about day 10 of the breeding season. Uh, any heifers that don't come into heat after this first shot of prostaglandin can get a second injection of prostaglandin here on day 18. So 11 days later, allowing them to, to be bred again after observed heat or fixed time at 72 and 96 hours after that second prostaglandin. So if all is well, one third of heifers get no shot. They get no injection here at the beginning. Two thirds will get this first injection of prostaglandin and a, and a small proportion then, somewhere less than 10% of the heifers will, will get this second injection of prostaglandin. Uh, the AI will be conducted over the, the 21 days of the, 
the first three weeks of the breeding season, but most of them will be bred here in the first 10 days. So most of that AI usage is restricted here to the first 10 days. Another option is to use fixed time AI protocol. So fixed time AI does what it says on the tin. You're, you're scheduling in when you want to inseminate these heifers and they're going to get bred at that time regardless of signs of heat. So this is what a protocol that we were planning to use in a, in a trial this year, but, but it ended up getting um, canceled. But this is an eight day synchronization protocol. So here, zero is mating start date, if that's, um, if that's still feasible at this stage but work back eight days from there. So eight days before the breeding season begins, an injection of GnRH and insert a progesterone device. Five days later, on three days before the breeding season, an injection of prostaglandin. The following day, another injection of prostaglandin and you remove the progesterone device. And then 48 hours after this, on mating start date, uh, an injection of GnRH and fixed time AI. Now, um, this protocol does require four interventions. So you got to bring the heifers in one, two, three, four times. There's four injections, one, pros, one progesterone device. And one advantage of this protocol over other fixed time AI protocols is that none of the animals will be in heat or will need to be inseminated before this scheduled time to AI. Okay, so that's a, that, 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 this is a protocol that's suitable for use on heifers. And then I've also shown here the a cow fixed time AI protocol. So, just, just some key things. If you're going to use cows for sex semen, when you start this protocol, they should be at least 40 days in milk. So again, that gets us our minimum of 50 days in milk on the day of AI. And again, just like the heifers, AI at a fixed time, regardless of signs of heat. So the cow protocol is a little bit different. Um, it's a 10 day protocol. So we're working back 10 days before mating start date here again, injection of GnRH and insertion of a progesterone device. Seven days later on day minus three, an injection of prostaglandin. The following day, another injection of prostaglandin. Um, and you'll see that I'm putting in some times here. So this is all morning time. 32 hours after the second inj injection of prostaglandin and removal of the progesterone device, we have um, an injection of GnRH at the evening milking. So this is 5 p.m. And then the next morning at 9 a.m. fixed time AI. And you have, you, have, you have a four hour window here, 16 to 20 hours. 9, 10, 11, 12, 1. So between 9 a.m. and 1 p.m. would be the normal time. From our own observations in the study last year, you could probably extend that on by another two hours as well. So, so um, 9 to 3 p.m., 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. would be a suitable window of time to conduct those inseminations. So for the cows, you're giving this GnRH even before fixed time AI. For the heifers on this previous slide, GnRH and timed AI are given together. And as uh, you know, if you're, if you're inseminating a large number of heifers, it would be useful to try and organize this for, for an evening time. So you, let's say the AI was going to be at 3 p.m. Well, if this is at 3 p.m., this is at 3 p.m., this is at 3 p.m., and then you should start the original protocol sometime in the afternoon. Okay, so that's, I'm gonna finish it up there and hand it back to, to Stuart, uh, who will manage the questions. Okay, thanks, Stephen. So the, a very comprehensive presentation into the research that has been done and uh, Quite a feasible option, I would say, for many people. So I'll just start the questions. We have a few questions coming in on the Q&A, but I'll just put one question to you, Stephen. Um, in terms of your thoughts on, are there certain criteria that you think farmers should be achieving before they actually consider uh, going the sex semen route themselves? Uh, so maybe it's not for everyone. It, it's, I suppose, it's choppy waters at the moment. I, I know from talking to you, you'd prefer if the relative conception rate was better on average overall before you'd really start to recommend it. Um, but are there, what criteria would you think that farmers should be targeting to be hitting in their normal um, operations before they start to consider sex semen as an option? Yeah, <clears throat> okay, so that's a good question, yeah. Um, the benefit, like sex semen is an expensive product, right? There's, there's no way around that. So if you're a herd that's not achieving good conception rates, then it's, it's, it's not the answer for you. Like for, for herds with, that aren't, you know, achieving good conception rates, so heifers at least 70%, cows close to or, or above 60%, then there's things to be fixed before sex semen becomes part of your main breeding strategy. Um, so look at the look at the calving pattern on the farm. So, you know, our, the, the target is about 90% six-week calving rate. And we know that, that, you know, nationally, we're still well away from that. But if you want to target cows that are long enough calved, then you can only really have a good pool of cows that are long enough calved if you have a calving pattern. So, so you know, again, if you're less than 80% six-week calving rate, 
is sex semen the answer? Probably not yet. There's, there's things that need to be addressed on the farm before sex semen becomes part of the part of the mainstream management strategy. At least in the in the cows, probably in the heifers, it's easier to implement on most farms. You know. Okay. Um, so there's two questions here now from Khan. Uh, I'll ask you the first one first and let you answer it and then I'll come back with the second one. So uh, just in relation to the trials, what percentage of cows met the criteria to take part in the trial? So 50 days in milk, no problems in the scan, etc. Or maybe you weren't privy to that information. Now for, you, were asked, you asked the farmers to present you if 100 cows that were really... Yeah, no, uh, well, so, so we, 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 we helped. The farmers involved now, we did... Um, were able to, to, to help them, I suppose, to, to go through our... We, we did an initial screen based on parity in days and milk. So probably that in itself would have, you know, like to, to have 100 cows suitable, you'd be talking about a 200 cow herd. That's, that, that was, okay. well, there were some herds that were bigger and there was, those bigger herds might have had more cows available that we didn't use. But, but, but for the herds that had somewhere in the region of 180 to 200 cows were able to meet that requirement of having 100 cows available for the trial. Okay, and the second part of that question was um, the study had three types of AI, conventional and sex at 9 a.m. and sex at 3 p.m. So why did you choose not to test conventional semen at 3 p.m. as well? Yeah, okay, well, because we knew in advance that that would be poor conception rate. So, so the, the timing of AI for conventional semen has been studied since the 1990s in, in these fixed time AI protocols. And once you go beyond 20 hours, you're into reducing fertility. So, so adding in a treatment that we knew was going to be uh, a potential cause of poor fertility, you know, was unattractive. Also, these, these trials are quite expensive, you know, to, 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 to organize in terms of synchronizing cows and getting your, getting access to cows. But it was basically a need for another 700, 750 cows to synchronize them. Um, and it just, you know, it, it, make, uh, it didn't make, it wasn't a timing of AI with conventional semen wasn't part of the goal. So you can see that if, if, if what I'm saying is correct here, we would have had poorer results with conventional, but as you saw, sex semen did not get, get poor at 3 p.m. So, so, so very delayed AI was actually slightly beneficial for, for sex semen, but we knew in advance that it would be bad news for conventional. Okay. So, um, Sean McCardle is asking, what is the difference in conception to fixed time versus natural service in the trials? Or yeah, okay. So, we, we haven't had any study where we've compared them in the same year, but, but in 2019, all the cows were, were bred to fixed time AI. Um, and on average, they came out at about 50%. And in 2018, all the cows were bred to natural heat. Now, there was two types of bulls in that study. There was ship ejaculates and there was resident bulls. But if we restricted to just the resident bulls in that study, which was still probably, you know, the bones, over 4,000 inseminations. So, so really, you know, a lot of inseminations in that, very similar, 60% with conventional, about 50% with sex. So, so quite similar, but, but that's, the, that's, that's the overall average. You know, again, there was a lot of herd to herd variation, probably something that wasn't under our control or, or possible to control was the timing of AI in those areas. So, so that the farmers were identifying cows in heat and they were inseminated. We had no idea, you know, were they coming onto heat? Were, were, they, were they at the start of their heat? Or were they, were they gone off heat? Were they still in standing heat? We, we, didn't, we had none of that information. Um, yeah. but, but the conception rates were approximately the same on average for the fixed time AI versus natural heat. Okay, so um, should service be delayed on the fixed time AI for the heifer? Using sex semen straws. Um, no is the answer because you know you're 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 going through this protocol. The heifers are, are more awkward to deal with than the cows because you have to bring them in in a in a dedicated time. But there is some international work with that exact protocol, and they're getting pretty good results with um, with sex semen on heifers. The the, the, the the concern with going late when you're not controlling the timing of AI very well is that you're actually missed you in some animals you'll have missed the best time for AI. So so for some animals you'll you'll maybe doing a little bit better, but for other animals in the group, you you could be reducing their their conception rates. Um, so that time of AI, that 48 hour gap with GNRH at the same time is, is what we're currently recommending for heifers. Okay. Um, so Tom Murphy was asking then as well, similar in a similar vein, uh, why is the program different for the cows versus the heifers in the fixed time AI protocols? Yeah, so I mean they've they've been worked out over a number of years to to try and try and 
optimize it for cows than heifers. So definitely a shorter period of progesterone exposure is better for heifers. So, so the, the progesterone device stays in for six days in heifers, it stays in for eight days in cows. Some of it's to do with just the follicular wave patterns. So, so the way the, the follicles come up on the ovary is a little bit different and the way it's controlled is a little bit different in heifers than it is in cows. Um, the other, the main difference to me is that the, the GnRH injection is given the evening before in cows and it's given at the same time as AI in, in the heifers. And that's just a practical thing. Um, the, the cows are coming in AM and PM anyway, so, so it's more realistic to be able to get them. Um, and if there's good facilities, you know, or, or some good way of marking the cows for GnRH, it's not a big deal to get anything before. Um, but, but for most systems, bringing in heifers ex one extra time might mean the difference between, you know, it being possible versus not being possible to implement. Okay, fair enough. Um, a question from Liam Quirk then, uh, possibly a step ahead maybe, uh, any difference in conception rates of the sex cell and sexed ultra 4M? So I, I, as, my, as far as I understand it, it's the sexed ultra 4M that has been used all along and sex cell is only coming to the fore this year really, is that correct? <laughs> yeah, so, so they're two different products. So all the trials we've done, well, sorry, 2018 and 2019 were both ultra 4M. Um, the, in the 2013 trial, it was just called Sex Ultra, but at the time, there was only 2 million sperm per, per straw in, in those studies. Sex Cell is a new product developed by ABS, Genesis ABS, the AI company, um, and, and they're setting up labs around the world now, but we, you know, we, have, we have no field trial data on that product to tell us, if, is it better, is it worse, is it roughly the same as what the Sex Ultra 4M product is? Um, it's a slightly different technology. So, so a, a number of the steps are identical, but at the end, instead of sorting the sperm you one way or the other, it incapac incapacitates or destroys the sperm that you don't want. So, so in, in, in the case of dairy farming, you want female calves, so the male sperm will be, will be destroyed. Um, whereas in the sex ultra foreign product, they physically sort the male and female sperm in different directions. Okay, so Andrew Nanine and McCroom is asking, has advice regarding AI heifers on outside farm, is it fixed time or natural, is it better? Or your, your advice, sorry, his advice yeah. regarding AI heifers. So, I mean, like again, it depends on the, the access to the outside farm and you know, how much of a, is, is it possible to there seven days to pick up heifers and heat, bring them in, and then on day seven, give PG and do three more days of AI, is that feasible? Um, or is it, is, it, is it much more feasible to, to do all the work in advance of the breeding season to get them all bred on mate and start date um, and, 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 and be done with it? There is advantages from the, for the, the heifers to the overall management of the heifers if you, can, if you can do that because, you know, the day after you AI, you can let the bulls in, leave them there for 16 days and then do one week of heat section from day 17 to day 24 after mating start date. Uh, whatever heifers are going to repeat that didn't go in calf, They'll repeat during that week, and you'll have you know 80, 85, 90 percent of the heifers in calf to AI um, within the first 21 days. So as a group, then they all calve in late January to, 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 to late, somewhere between late January and mid February, giving them a you know a real good chance of staying in the herd for a long time. So you, you you're really pulling forward the, the calving pattern of your your new entrance into the dairy herd. So uh, okay. is is it is it is it one or the other? It, it depends on the situation. You have to kind of decide what. What makes sense so for that term? Availability of facilities and labor, etc., really is the deciding yeah, yeah. factor more so. Yeah, is, is, is the time available to, to allocate the heat detection and you know are, are the facilities there suitable for bringing the heifers in every day for, for at least I mean like you know you're are you gonna be able to bring in all these heifers every day for, for 10 days to, to do the AI? Or is it better to bring them all in four times and at the end of the fourth time they're all ready? And would it be fair to say that if you were uh, considering that you're talking about the AMPM kind of scenario being best for the sixth, um, that you would be looking at having to heat detect those heifers in the evening time prior. To, it's not going to be a case of running the heifers in in the morning and picking out everything that scratch cards are cleaned off. Yeah, because so again, you're not going to be sure. So there is questions there then about you know is it if it's DIY, you know is is, is that additional effort to do AMPM is that going to be feasible, or if it's technician service. Is that, is that a once a day, um, you know, is that person going to show up once a day? Um, more than likely, yes, is the, is the answer to that. So at, if, if that's the case, then you need to identify which heifers are suitable for sex semen and which are not getting sex semen because they're whatever, they're four or six or eight hours after heat onset. They're, they're okay for conventional, but, but they're, they're not going to be suitable for sex semen. 
Okay, so there's another few questions there, but we'll leave them uh, off for a little. We we'll just move over to Jim just to get the practical on-farm experience that he's had in relation to using the sex semen. So, as I said at the outset, Jim is farming with his wife Teresa and his four daughters just outside of Mullinahone in County Tipperary, milking 190 cows, uh, and has been using sex semen since the first of the trials with Stephen back in 2013. And he's going to uh, give a comment on how he fi how he works with it and. Uh, how he's found it and how it's working for him. So I'll hand it over to Jim. So thank you, Jim. Okay. Okay, Stuart. Um, yeah, we were we were fortunate uh, that we, we got into the trial in 2013. And uh, I suppose the background to the herd is we, we would have had um, a, a long history of um, doing AI successfully and bringing in plenty of um, heifers in early into the cabin. And uh, so we were... We were we were set up as a herd for for the sex semen. Um, I felt when it did start in 2013, and we took part in that trial. And look, it went very well for us. Um, and we were in the 2018 and the last year's trial then as well. And if I average the three the three of them together, we've got 60% um, conception rate to sex semen over over the trials. Um, you know, that would be a little bit of a compromise on what we would get with conventional, but not an awful lot. Um, we would have got 70% uh, conception rate to our maiden heifers over the years, 70 plus maybe sometimes. Uh, uh, we'd have a good high 60s to conventional uh, with the cows. And um, so it's a fertile herd. So I would say it is it rightly, um, you know, it, it, we were in a good place for, for the sex even trial, Stuart. That's very good. Um, so we'll say in terms of you obviously were in part of that trial in 2013 and there were some great successful stories came out of that trial and there were some horror stories, I suppose, as well in terms of very poor conception rates. But you, you obviously fared well to say you continued with it. Yeah, we did fare well. And look, um, I remember that trial, it seems it was a good while ago now, but there was great care. Um, there was great care, I felt, with the, we had a good AI man. He was a man I didn't know at the time. He was assigned to us. Um, from um, from our AI company, and he came with the straw. So he was very particular technician, very professional, and um, we we had we put our effort into having the cow right. And um, he was very careful about what he was doing, and we kept up that professional way of doing it, and it went well for us. And then 2018, we done some sex seam, and then through the the years in between. And that went well. We, we had one blip with one bull that just wasn't, um, just just wasn't uh, far sex semen as um, Stephen had said earlier. All bulls, um, you know, they, they, it just doesn't work for some of the semen. But apart from that blip, we, we went well. We continued a good story with it, and then we were in the. We had a, an AI man that uh, our own technician for the years, maybe 15, 16, and he was in the trial then 18 and 19. So he, he built up plenty of experience with Stex Seaman and following, he followed really good guidelines the whole way through on it. And there was a number of uh, farmers in nearby parishes that were using him as well for the Stex Seaman. So he has a lot of experience. So I, I really, I know I'm repeating maybe what Stephen had said, but um, I think the technician and how professional he carries out his duty with sex semen it is it is compromised so he you know he is vital to it our job is to have the cow right and follow all our protocols there and then trust that everybody else has the semen common right and the technician then doing the job nice and slowly and promptly and following the guidelines so that was that was you know the, the technician i couldn't emphasize enough now to be honest um having everything ready for him and be Nice okay, so I think you're, you're leading into the next question I'm going to ask you in relation to the being organised, having spoken to you in advance of today about how you prepare for this and you're hoping to start later this week as far as I understand it. Yeah. Um, you have you have it, your, your work done and, or your homework done already. You were showing me the breeding chart on, on screen there the other day and like you've your cows picked out already that are, are candidates for, for sex. Yeah, I, I really like the way Stephen had, had ever... No, Stephen had a great uh, protocols put in place last year and um, we, we've been done ourselves now without the trial this year. We have our breeding chart 
and we were going with first, second and third lactation animals. Um, we're fortunate that we have a lot of them that are 60 days plus calf now. And that's the one we're going with 60 days plus and we have uh, and any um, any little issues that were there if, if they held cleanings or anything like that, they, them cows are taken out. But we have uh, well in excess of 100 cows um, that are going to fit our criteria this year. And we have six, 60 sex semen straws purchased, three across. The, so we know our bulls and we have it all, and we know the cows that can get it. And um, so we're, we know when the AI man comes, we have our cow ready. She's at the right time time of AI. I think that's very important that we've learned that from the trials. I think we can get this a little bit above 60 um, with, with, with the research that's been done. So our time, we want to make sure this cow has gone off heat. Um, so, so we'll have so many of those cows every day for AI and hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll have the sex semen over in the early part of the breeding season. But we, have, we know our rules that we have for the cow uh, to have her presented on the day um and and then once the AI man has everything else coming in with the with the sex semen right, hopefully we'll get a good marriage of the both of both of them. So just to clarify then we'll say what's your plan in terms of heat detection for the cows? Okay. Um, we, so you're watching we, them morning yeah, and evening we, as they're coming in? Yeah, we, we tail painted everything three weeks ago. So we're really happy now where we, we we're going to get we know we're going to get a holly submission rate so we know we have that we will tail paint now everything again just before we start the day before we start ai we want to get these cows off um, you know to be finished with standing heat so we'll be observing in the afternoon when we're milking and i think this year um i have plenty of time on my hands in the evening time i think i will do um i'll do an observation maybe at half eight in the night in the evening um just to get a picture of what way everyone is um at that time, and that will set me up again for the morning. It was just something I thought I'd do. I haven't done that now other year. Well, last year we had the, the the fixed time, but I'm going to do that now this year and know exactly where we are for the morning. Like you know, the it be under a bit more pressure this year with the HJC guidelines for social distancing and all that. So we want to have everyone ready for them. So we should know that night. You know, we I'd have a fair idea who will be ready then when I go out to bring in the cows that morning, get all the cows in that are, are right for the sex semen. I'd imagine next week we might have, we'll say we had half our cows that would be for AI, could be for sex semen. So if we had six cows uh, presented for um, AI, we might have three cows for sex semen. We could do them three first and then do the rest with conventional after that. So the, AI technician knows where everything, you know, go with them ones first and get them done. Very good. So you have, um, you've all your, you've your own tank and your uh, yeah. AI, your three bulls that you've selected for sex, they're going to be in the goblet and it's all on their own, as Stephen uh, said. No, number one, I think you said the other day. Yeah, they're in goblet. Yeah, they're in goblet one. And then we have 10 other um, high EBI um, Frisian bulls selected. So we have we have those to take our, uh, our our team from. So we have the three sex semen ones in one goblet. So I'd like if the technician to deal with the sex semen first, get them ones done, and uh, then move to the, to the conventional. And um, you know, it'll be one. I, I imagine I'll have the sex semen completed in the first seven days. So we're only going to use it on the cows. We're going to go with the maiden heifers. We'll we'll we're going to do the week of AI, we're not using sex semen there, we're just using conventional there. Um, is there a rationale for not using it on the heifers just out of I, interest? I, I was going to with the trial, the trial that Stephen was planning was that the maiden heifers would be in it, but I think this year with everything, I think if I can get 60, um, 60 sex semen done on the cows, I think a good result for the year that's in it. The maiden heifers will be away from home on a, well, it's a, it's a nearby out farm. And um, I think we will go for the week observing and then a PG and we will get the rest in that, you know, so it's cost effective. I think it's a year to, you know, Stephen had said it, it's, uh, it's an expensive business, um, the sex email and this is a year to mind, mind, uh, mind the finances and um, 
I suppose the, those things between the, the finances for the year ahead and um, and the you know the protocols that are in place and maybe the Ironman might be slowed down with with everything this year. I just think it's enough to do the the cows for us anyway for this year. So that's my Very rationale good. behind that. This yep. year. Very good. Um, so just one that came in there while Stephen was doing the presentation. It's very valid, and I think you have a good um, good answer to give in relation to this. Is actually from one of our colleagues in in um, in the Tip region, actually Padraig Costigan and Nina, just uh, making the point that before use, people should be really careful that they know that they have the facilities and the labour in place to deal with the high level of, we'll say, obviously, if they don't have bull calves that they're going to be moving off the farm, there could be a lot more heifer calves on hand very quickly uh, and how they deal with them. So just might just outline how you deal with them because you have a good good story to tell in terms of your plan and you're organised around that as well. Okay, yeah. I um, He's actually a first cousin of mine, um, 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 a farmer that uh, used to purchase calves from us. And he got fed up of uh, buying calves and not making money on the, the beef end of things. So we we went into a partnership with him, Heifer Aaron partnership, um, two years ago, where he takes um, 50, 60 of the first heifer calves that are born. Um, he take them at a fortnight old um, and take them to his farm and rear them on milk for the summer. And I take them back then in October. He's a very good um, calf rarer and... I suppose for him, he's delighted that he can get in, in nearly a 10-day period, in a fortnight period, he has his 60 calves from me uh, gone to, and he set up with one bunch together. He has a, he has a job as well. Um, he, he has a, so he has a commitment there. So it, it, it's, it's suited very well. And it gives me then uh, 60 gone from the farm. And um, we, we would have more, we can concentrate then, we have more time then to concentrate on the rest of the calves. So we have 60 gone and we can, we can, we, we have a good time then for the, for the rest. So it has, that has, I suppose, um, for us, the, our herd suits the sex even. We're at it long enough that it suits. And my calf rearing facilities, I don't have an awful lot of calf sheds. I have enough for, um, you know, that, that 60 gone makes a big help to me in the springtime and it's labour, and he's happy, and look at his goal well, but it's marrying in well with the sex semen. Like, I'm too long trying to get the, you know, the sex semen has worked in well with that. So that that's just, you know, that might suit everyone, but for us, it did, it, it suit very well. Okay, so um, I think uh, you've synopsized very well there in terms of how it's working for you, so I might just uh, throw it open for questions again. You're very happy with it anyway, Jim, from what, from what I, I can I am. Uh, I suppose I, I'd have to reiterate again. It, look, we're, we're a long time at AI. AI has always been done on our farm and back in my father's time and not since AI started. So we the AI, is, we've been doing it a long, long time. Uh, and we don't we don't have stock bulls as such on the farm. It's AI the whole way through. So, and the, cow, the cows are bred for fertility. That's another thing maybe... It, just to add in, we have a very fertile herd. They're not um, big milk volume cows. They're, they're cows that go back in calf easily. And we we have maiden hair coming in and a good number of them every year that are calving at the start of the calving season. So I think we have, I know that it was mentioned earlier, we would have the protocols for, for this. It, you know, we would have a lot of them in place. Very good. So you've obviously given quite a comprehensive synopsis of it there because we have very few questions coming in for you, but we still yes. we do have a few other questions there for Stephen. So I'll just, uh, while we wait, maybe to see if there's any question in for you. I'll just put one to you, another one to you, Stephen, there. Um, Rachel White is asking, was breed a factor in assigning the treatment or did you see any variation across herds with crossbreds versus, we'll say, pedigree or black and white herds, I presume, would be um, in the trial work that you've com completed? Um, so within a herd, you know, cows are, if it's crossbred herds, they're all crossbreds and they would have been equally allocated to the different treatments. Um, we, like, herd effect is always large. There's always variation between herds and some of that might be due to type of cow, the EBI, or whether it's crossbred or not. And we looked at, the 2018 trial was large enough to allow us to look at crossbred versus non-crossbred herds. And on average, those crossbred herds were, were better in conception for both sex and conventional, um, but the relative conception rate was much the same. So, so it's not like sex semen performs 
especially better in crossgrade, it doesn't. It's uh, uh, the conception rate, absolute conception rate is greater for sex than conventional, but the relative conception rate, that, that gap between sex and conventional was much the same. Okay, and uh, another question in from Khan again. Uh, what new trials do you want to implement over the next few years on sex semen or have most aspects been studied already? Well, you'll, you'll never be done with, um, with, 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 the, with these trials, it seems. Like every time we do a trial, we come up with more questions than, than we went in with. Um, so, I mean, one obvious one is this new product that's available, Sexel, you know, some, some sort of control study to, to really examine that, just as we have done for an, an, a number of occasions for sex ultra 4M. Um, we'd like to know more about the, the specific handling for sex semen straws. That would be useful, you know, to, to develop tighter SOPs there. Um, and one thing that we're, we're, we're playing with, although it's proving very difficult, is to try and predict in advance which bulls are going to be fertile or not. So that would be you know, great if you could screen a bull to know are they going to be high or low fertility bulls in a lab so that for, before an AI company makes a decision to sort thousands of straws from this bull that some prior information to, to predict that a bull is going to be either you know, good, average or poor fertility. It won't be any more accurate than that, but if you could at least identify the ones that were poor, and pull the plug on sorting large amounts of semen from those bulls, it would be, it would obviously the, the figures for all the sex semen that's used if you could pull out the, the poor performing bulls. Okay, so, um, and just then to come to Podrick's uh, point in relation to facilities, I suppose high six week calving rate is going to drive that anyway, but we actually see the use of sex semen and obviously not generating these unwanted dairy males and potentially generating more higher quality um, beef cross animals, we'll say maybe using DBI straws, etc. early on in this as maybe being one option for people to actually reduce the, the labor requirement as well. So these will be calves that can be moved a bit quicker, possibly so uh, are easier to sell. So do you think that there's a role for that as well. So we generate our heifers, we have them very early on, they're a nice batch of heifers, like Jim has said, in relation to his own situation. And then that a lot of our remaining stock are actually saleable beef stock. Do you think that's a, a very feasible option for people? Yeah, well, I, I mean, obviously sex semen usage to get your replacements goes hand in hand with using more beef semen as well, right? So, so you identify your dams you want to get sex semen used on, so that's let's say it's heifers, and let's say it's a, it's a subset of the cows, your 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 population of cows that are most fertile. Um, and then the other cows are are in that category of um, you know they're they're suitable for beef. And obviously, if you identify them in advance, then you're using some of that beef semen from the very start of the breeding season. You know, you're on, on day one. If a particular cow comes in, she's getting draw because I don't want to replace them from her. I'm not investing in dairy semen for that for that cow. So, you know, if you can get your sex semen usage done in the first week or 10 days, or our amazing start date if you're relying on fixed time AI, then all your female replacements are born. Either way, they're born at the start of the calving period the next spring. But everything else then is going to be, a, a, you know, a beef calf for, for sale. And, and it, might, it might well be much easier to market those calves or, or to arrange in advance that by a certain date, you have an expectation of having a certain number of you know, a certain type of uh, a beef cross calf and, and you know, trying try to sell those in, in advance. Yeah, I agree. It's, uh, it's definitely something that's more marketable. Okay, so Jim, there's a question in, and I, I think you may have touched on it in terms of your plan to get some exercise and fresh air around half eight every evening there for the next couple of weeks. Um, if you're AI to sex straws using, using natural uh, do you get caught up with the AI timing in terms of the 16 to 22 hours? And if you're serving at nine in the morning, when would you like to have seen the cow bowling? Yeah, yeah um, I it's very important that with sex semen, the trials have clearly shown that, you know, that the, the heat is gone off. We say that, the, you know, that the, the standing heat is finished. So we'll observe in the <coughs> afternoon and um, that would be an ideal time if they were if they were standing. Then we'll say, and they were you went out at half eight in the evening, and that was going off at that stage, or maybe finished. But she is perfect then for the next morning at nine o'clock. Um, if I go out at half eight and I see, or if if I come to the next morning and I see she was bullying standing the evening before, she's still standing that morning, but she can't. She she's not far sexed. Um, she might fall into the category of she might be just about to go off. Maybe she'd get a test straw 
And, um, th th you know, th that I'd be happy to use that, but I wouldn't be using sex semen um, until um, that, that standing heat is observed off. So, I, you know, I think that's very important. So that's why I, all, all the ones that fall into the criteria on paper might not fall into the criteria of once a day AI, which we will be doing. We will, we will be just doing that nine o'clock morning AI. So um, while some of the cows, w w you know, will, will fall, will be right on paper, they might not be right on timing for this. But I have enough cows what I'm saying, I've, lo I've loads of cows um, that will be in, that will meet all other criteria, so I'm pretty confident we'll have enough that will fit in on the time and then, but there is a bit of work in the first week of of having that time and I think that is important to emphasise. I think, to be fair, we'll just, we'll pretty much wrap it up now at this stage, but I think uh, it's quite clear that from the organisation that you've Put, or planning that you've put into it in advance is important as well to make next week go really smoothly that you're not kind of running around in a fluster to see is this cow suitable to, to be actually mm. using a sex straw on or you know in advance we'll say as you said when you come in from your half eight observation there you'll be able to check the chart or whatever and see yeah. is she suitable for her and you'll know before you start milking the following morning that there's three cows for, feet, for six straws and three cows for conventional or whatever is the situation. So I think um, we've had a very good hour's conversation between the practical element from Jim's side and the, the very technical side from Stephen's point of view. But it's really feasible option for people, I think, especially if we're hitting the high, high conception rates and high submission rates and good six-week calving rates, as Stephen has alluded to as well. So this is a real option. And given the pressure that the industry is under in terms of the male calving situation, uh, the fact that this is a uh, technology that's available to us, uh, we should be looking at it uh, and definitely giving it some consideration. So I'd just like to thank Stephen for a very comprehensive presentation and I'd like to express my sincere thanks and gratitude to Jim. Uh, Stephen and I are getting paid to do this. Uh, Jim is, is giving of his time voluntarily. So um, I'd like to thank you very much, Jim, for time to give us your experience and give us the the way that you're going to take this on for this year and how it works for you. So um, thanks very much to everyone for joining in and the seminar will be available. Uh, it's been, been recorded, so it will be available for to go back on uh, in due course later this evening or tomorrow. And we're here again tomorrow uh, on the same, at the same time from 11 discussing bull selection and the reason for why people need to pick big teams of bulls, just as Jim has alluded to there, that he has 10 um, genomic sires selected along with his three bulls for, for six. Uh, why, why we need to do that. And we'll also have Richie O'Brien, who's the um, Chagas Dambia Monitor Farm Program Coordinator, talking about his experience of picking bull teams with the monitor farms and how successful they have been down through the years. So thanks again to Stephen and to Jim and to all of you for uh, participating this morning and for the questions. And uh, we'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you.